Hello and thanks for tuning in, I guess. And in effect, that's what it's all about. Um, total collective attunement of the human mind, the human condition. I'm trying to tune into this world and my place in it. You're trying to tune in by the same token to your place in this world. And the big question is, how do we come together and walk along the optimal path and find each other in harmonious ways? Because isn't that what utopia is all about? It's all about the heart and mind working along the accords of the optimal path. Because if there is a utopian model that we can all arrive at, it will be the optimal model. So yes, um, utopia with an E and eudaimonia, I think that's how you pronounce it. I love that concept. You know, how, how do we allow, how do we give rise to a world where every single being lives, to fu lives in a fulfilled way, in a wholesome way? How do we arrive at a world where when one arrives at their final days, they can look back in the understanding that their life was one of deep fulfillment, one of meaning, one of purpose? You know, how do we ensure that? How do we ensure that quality of life for every sovereign being on the planet? OK, so it's a big question and, you know, we have to get into, we have become mindful of it in a deep way, in a very deep, abstract way if we are going to understand how to address it and move forward in a more brighter and humane way. So yes, uh, eudaimonia and utopia with an E. So yeah, I'm going to just run with some of my own ideas. Um, you know, my life's work has been around creating a systemic lens. You know, I wanted to understand how the mind, the mind sees systemically. I wanted to build a wall of axioms so we could understand that lens and refine it and move forward in that lens, move forward in the compass that sits within in the correct manner, okay, along the optimal path, if you will. So yes, how do we optimize the optimal path? Because like I said, if we're going to arrive at a utopian model, a utopian framework for thought, for heart and mind, well, you know, we have to be able to optimize the way, we have to be able to find the optimal path. So yeah, I like to, you know, I'm going to paint a picture. I'm going to talk about the systemic lens that I've been working, you know, my whole life, you know, so I've been working to build it, to refine it, to understand it and so on. I will get to that eventually. But right now I want to just sort of build up the picture of our species around the idea of an orchestra, that we're a collective orchestra made up of 8 billion heads, that we are made, made up of 8 billion sensitive instruments. The human mind is a very sensitive instrument, the human mind and the human heart, two very sensitive instruments. And these instruments are looking, you know, the op part of being on the optimal path is, you know, that we, it'll create harmony for us. And, 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 and you know, any orchestra wants to come, come together, you know, wants to play in a harmonious way, okay? So how do we play collectively in a harmonious way? How do we hold a chord by the correct ontological scales of life and move forward in an absolute way on the back of that wave? Isn't that the fundamental question? that we are positing right now in relation to how do we arrive, like I said, at a utopian model. So yes, I like to think of the world, the collective head, as an orchestra, and the human instrument is trying to play at the humanity's table. We're all, trying, we're all part of the orchestra and we're all trying to play, and we're all trying to understand the fundament, fundamentals of our place in this universe. We're all trying to do right by one another, but you know, you know, we're fucking up big time, let's face it. When you look at the world, when you take a macro umbrella construct, look at, the, look at the world, we're malfunctioning, okay? At the core level, we're malfunctioning. And irrespective of the great thinkers and the philosophers and scientists and the mathematicians and the nerds and the, the cosmic nerds, the revolutionaries, the artists, the poets and so on, and, you know, and all the great individuals and all the families in all the tribes, because intelligence, it's all, it's all by degree, okay? This big orchestra, it's all degrees of intelligence, degrees of madness, degrees of you know, brilliance, degrees of genius, degrees of stupidity, and so on. This is the orchestra of life. And it's, you know, at a fundamental level, it is malfunctioning, okay? We're not working at the optimal. We're not optimizing the optimal, the optimal path, okay? And, you know, I mean, look at how we are optimizing ourselves. Exploitation, we're exploiting each other, and that is not optimizing. That's not the best optimal way to work our species. You know, we don't get good results from that kind of framework of thought. That's not the way to optimize our species, especially if we want to bring in, you know, you know, the, you know, if we want all individuals to live in a fulfilled way. OK, we can't exploit one another. So we have to rule out the hand of exploitation. It's a very dirty hand that undermines our species in myriad ways, as does the class system. OK, that's pissing in the pond that undermines our species in myriad ways. And if we are to fix the global problem, if we are to fix the collective head, if we are all to come together as a single orchestra, as eight billion beautiful 
sensed that instruments were all to play in harmony as opposed to discordancy, well, then we have to rule out the class system. We have to rule out the caste system because, you know, this is not the correct optimal path to go on. Exploitation is not the optimal path. How do we optimise the optimal path? How do we optimise our full potential and roll forward on the back of that wave? Because that is the question too. So yes, we're an orchestra. We're an orchestra of players. And if you just, one of the things I want to look at is the way we can all hold a chord by fixed scales. So you can imagine an orchestra of a hundred musicians and they're brought together to bring a symphony of notes into play. They're brought together, if you like, to bring a piece of Mozart into play for our ears, to bring Mozart into our ear. And they all work together around a single scale. So they all have the ability to conduct our minds around the accords of a single scale and so they can bring Mozart into fruition for our ears, as I have said. This ability is amazing in us, okay? I want to shed light on this fact, okay? We all have the ability to hold a chord by scales. We all have the ability to hold a chord by the scale of an alphabet or the scale of numbers and so on, okay? We all understand the way we can scale bridges up and down, we, the way we can scale our universe down to molecules and so on and square it up to planets as big as Jupiter. Okay, we all have the ability to conduct ourselves around the accords of fixed scales and this is phenomenal in us. Because, you know, we need to look at what's phenomenal in us, okay? Because what's phenomenal in us will be the fundamental bedrock of utopia, okay? The, all the phenomenal sides of our potential is what we're going to bring into light. And all the negative sides, all the broken sides, all the sides that allow us the monkey brain, it allows us to exploit and to demean others or to believe that you sit on a better branch, your majesty and all that side. The monkey brain has driven all of that and that old paradigm, the schizophrenic paradigm is going to be ruled out. And what we're going to give light to, what we're going to give magnitude to is the dominant side of our, you know, makeup, you know. So that's why I'm trying to shed light on this phenomenal instrument within. I'm trying to get, I'm gonna give it systemic agency as we go along, just to show you, to give you a full picture of its magnitude, okay? Because, you know, if we don't bring in a utopian model, then we're left with this malfunctioning model. This is not the optimal way. So we're looking for the optimal path, okay? We're looking for the optimal path in every respect. And that's layered, but we're looking for the optimal path. And if we don't realize the optimal path, then we're going to continue to exploit one another and demean one another. And I don't think people truly understand the mechanism that they're messing with, okay? You know, you're pissing into the pond of life. You're pissing into the sacred ground of humanity. Our minds are sacred. You know, Henry Thoreau spro spoke about the mind as sacred ground. You know, he asked us not to desecrate, the desecration of sacred ground, to exploit, to demean one another. He called it the desecration of sacred ground. That's so beautiful. The desecration, to not hold sacred by sacred ground, to not hold sacred by one another, to not respect one another. The idea that we would exploit one another, it's just so beneath us. It's a weakness in the matrix. Okay, it's a weakness in our species. The class system is a weakness in the matrix. Okay, it's not optimizing the optimal path. We're not getting the full potential of eight billion heads at the orchestra of life. So we need to know what we're fucking with, okay? Because we keep undermining ourselves, okay? It's because if we're gonna bring in a brighter future, a brighter day, a utopian day, okay? Well, like I said, we're gonna be lifting up all the good sides of our species, all the potential, all the phenomenal potential. So yes, so let's break ourselves down. Let's get into the, you know, let's abstract from ourselves, okay? Right now, if we want to actually understand ourselves, if we, if we want to become mindful of ourselves at the deepest level, We've got to get into the gut of phenomenology, okay? So let's break down this instrument. Let's break down the instrument that is playing at the orchestra, okay? And let's take the ego out of it. Let's take color out of it, okay? Let's disengage from ego. Let's disengage from war. Let's disengage from class systems and the idea of nationalhood. Let's nationhood. Let's disengage, just disengage from science and God stories and Bibles and all the religious texts. Let's just disengage because I just want to break us down right now into the systemic mechanics of the human mind, okay? The idea we can conduct ourselves and hold a chord by fixed scales is phenomenal in us. So how do we do that? Okay, we, we do that because we have the ability to systemize. We have the ability to find symmetry with, with the geometry of plays and reality. And this is because we can systemize, we can square up the circle. In the simplest sense, what I'm about to talk about is all about squaring up the circle. And once again, like I said, I'm trying to give, take stock of the mind so you can understand what we are as a species. Let's understand this instrument outside of the ego, outside of all our bad and negative and positive actions. Let's just break it down, like I said, and understand this e instrument in an abstract way and take stock of what we are, take stock of this engine within our heads because this engine gives light to what we actually are as a species. More to the point. 
So yes, I want to break it down, like I said, and we all have the ability to square up with a scale, to bring Mozart into fruition, okay? If you're part of an orchestra, you square up with the scale. And a piece of music is a complete piece, therefore a circle, okay? So we can square up the circle, okay? You square up the cube is to find completeness with what the cube is. We're trying to square up what Einstein gave to us. We're trying to find a complete picture with what it is. We're trying to square up the cell, okay? So meaning we're trying to find a complete circle picture of the, the the cell, we're trying to circumscribe our mind all around all the variables of the cell so we can find a complete picture with it. And that's what I mean by squaring up the circle, okay? And if we were to find God and our place in relation to God, we're gonna try and square ourselves up in relation to what God might be as a complete tautological network of plays onto itself and so on, okay? So anyway, it's all about squaring up the circle. And I love the idea that our minds can square things up. For example, World War II, the Nazism didn't square up, okay? I love the idea when something doesn't square up, you know? It doesn't, somebody says it doesn't figure. Nazism doesn't figure because it held no configuration in us. It doesn't hold to a natural configuration of things. It doesn't hold to the optimal way, more to the point. It doesn't hold to the optimal way. Racism, sexism, the, the class system, it does not hold to the, it holds no traction with the optimal way that is built within us and, you know, around a priori structures of thought and so on and so on and so on, so much to discuss. So anyway, the instrument, the human instrument. And like I said, we're all at an orchestra of life. And I'm just streaming with this. It's just streaming. Go with the river, river of life. See where it takes you. But I am going to make a point. I'm going to nail this down when we get to the end and um, I'll weave it all together and make my point clear, I hope. So let's break down. Let's get into the phenomenological gut of the mind. Let's abstract from ourselves. Let's abstract from ego. Let's abstract from body. Let's abstract from capitalism and war and all the variables that have brought us out of the dark to where we are on this day. Let's abstract from it and ask ourselves, what are we in the most pure systemic sense? How are we actually seeing the world? How is the instrument conducting itself around all the scales of all the fixed inferences of nature? Well, there are many, many different modes in the mind, what I call utility modes, that allow us to square up the circle, okay? They allow us to square, how are we going to square up the circle of utopia? How are we going to find a fundamental bay that will carry us all in an optimal way, in a harmonious way? How are we going to square up that circle so we can arrive at that and hold a core by the scale of it, and so on? So... There are many what I call utility modes in the mind, okay? Now, like I said, I'm breaking down the mind in an abstract way to create an, a, a constellation picture of a set of modes that are working in the mind that allow us to see systemically, that allow us to find symmetry with the geometry of all plays and so on. So, conducting, the idea we can conduct ourselves along fixed scales, conducting is a utility mode. We can utilize, we conduct ourselves. You're trying to conduct yourself, your mind around what I'm trying to say right now. We're all trying to conduct ourselves. We conduct ourselves around music, around alphabets, around the rules of the road, around the rules of the airport. We conduct ourselves around time and dates and so on. We conduct ourselves around family values and so on and around, you know, human values. We all conduct ourselves. So the idea, we, we, you know, this is like a hand we can conduct ourselves. This is a handle of the mind. It's a utility mode of the mind. So that's just one utility mode of the mind. Another utility mode of the mind, we can utilize navigation. The idea that we have navigated our way forward out of the dark. We have navigated our way into alphabets. We have navigated our way into science, into chemistry, into the molecule. We're navigating ourselves. We have navigated our way into ideas like sovereignty and equality and so on. We are navigating our way forward and we're trying to navigate our way towards a utopian model, okay? The optimal way. We're trying to navigate our way along the correct bed of coordinates and axioms so we can find our way so we can find a way forward and live in a more brightful and meaningful way and so on. Okay, so we, are all, we all have the ability to conduct our minds around what is and we can navigate by what is. So these are two utility modes of the mind. Another utility mode of the mind is evaluation. You're evaluating what I'm, trying, what I'm saying to you. You're trying to evaluate it, okay? I try to evaluate Kant. I'm trying to evaluate Einstein. We are evaluating all the time. We evaluate fixed scales. We evaluate music and how it relates to the fixed scale and so on. I can evaluate the fact that I can navigate and I can navigate the fact that I can evaluate, okay? I can conduct my mind around the fact that I can navigate. I can, I can, I can conduct my mind around the fact that I can conduct myself, okay? So these are all 
there's a topology to this. That I'm going to paint a topological um, set for you, like I said, a constellation set of systemic modes that allow us to see the world systemically. And when I shed light on them, when I show you, when I give more volume, more magnitude to this picture, this abstract picture I'm trying to shape in your own head, I'm trying to make you become mindful of it within, in the phenomenological sense, then I will show you the importance of why we need to understand this, because there's no arriving at a utopian model without it, okay? Because this is what gives us magnitude, and this is what gives us the blueprint that we need to work by. So yes, so, and just stay trying to square this up as a circle, trying to find it within. And, you know, phenomenology for me, you know, and ontology, obviously they're the two key subjects that we're looking at, okay? That's the deepest level of what we're looking at right now, what we're intuiting. Well, phenomenology, I like to think of it as a kind of a, a complex spanner. An ontology is a complex nut. So the question is, how do I construct, how do I, you know, sit my ontological spanner into the ontological nut? How do I structure the mind spanner around the ontological nut? Because once, we have, once we're locked into that, that holistic algorithm, if you will, I believe we'll be able to move forward in a more absolute way and leave this paradigm behind us forevermore, this schizophrenic malfunctioning paradigm, malfunctioning by degree and functioning by degree. We'll leave it behind us forevermore and move forward in a more absolute way. Okay, but that's, that's, there's complex steps are gonna be needed to understand that in full. And right now, here we are on this day, you know, trying to at least, I'm all about at least showing you the compass within your head, okay, so we can begin that journey, that journey of the locking the phenomenological spanner into the ontological note, okay? We have to understand the mind's mechanisms first. We have can't understood this. We have to understand the mind for its capacity and limitations, okay? And we have to understand how it's structured and so on and so on and how this structure fits into the environmental structure and so on, okay? So many avenues to go down, so many avenues to go down. So yes, we all have the ability to evaluate and conduct ourselves and navigate, okay? We navigate our way to the airport, we conduct ourselves by all the signs we're following, we evaluate and so on. Another great utility mode of the mind is adding, okay? Adding isn't just about adding up your pennies, clearly, okay? We can add up World War II. We can't add ourselves onto that configuration. It doesn't figure, it doesn't square up. There's no completeness to it. It was an abomination of what we hold to be sacred and good and righteous and so on. Capitalism doesn't square up and so on. So we navigate our minds around capitalism when we start to evaluate capitalism. We cannot add it up. We, do, we cannot add up exploitation as good as, as something that brings us along the optimal path. It's not worth optimizing and so on to exploit another, to undermine another, to undermine, the, to desecrate the sacred ground of another human being, okay? There's no utopian model in that kind of thought that is of the monkey brain. So yes, so adding, we don't just add up our money. We're trying to add up Einstein. We're trying to add up our place in the universe. We're trying to add up our place in relation to what God might be. We're trying to add ourselves onto ontology and phenomenology. And we're trying to add ourselves into the field of epistemology, okay? That's going to take a lot of complex adding. But the point is, we have the mode of adding built in. And it's very important. It's such a phenomenal mode. And like I say, this is... We have to start realizing this now, become mindful. This is huge in fucking human beings, okay? It doesn't matter. We have this idea, like there's a lot of people that are uneducated, but they're all evaluating their money. They're all adding up their pennies. They're all adding up their pennies at the races, okay? They're all evaluating the TV and how to work. They all evaluate and navigate their way around the kitchen and around shopping malls. So my point is, these modes are in all. Just because people, they're redundant in most, just because most people are unaware of their utility, that they're functioning at a subconscious level, but because we've become conscious of them now, we can recalibrate around them, we can refine them in us and work them, imply them with more punch, if you will. And this is the way, this is the key to locking phenomenology into the ontological nut. Lots, many more miles to go. So yes, anyway, the idea, so we can categorize another mode of, mode of the mind, we can categorize, we can categorize that we can add, we can categorize war, we can categorize love, we can categorize molecules, we can categorize that we can categorize. Like I said, we can categorize, we can conduct, we can navigate, we can add, we can evaluate, we can identify. We're trying to identify ourselves, we're trying to identify ourselves in body, we're trying to identify ourselves in relation to what this universe is and what our purpose is. So identity is a huge mode within the fact that we're trying to identify, you're trying to identify with what I'm saying, I'm trying to identify with what you're saying, I'm trying to impress on you, you're trying to impress on me, we're all trying to impress on one another, we're all trying to identify ourselves in the composition of plays. We're all looking for composure in the composition of plays. I don't like to think of the ghost as a ghost in a machine. I like to think of it as the ghost in a composition of plays. How does the mind find composure in the composition of plays? 
And when one finds composure in the composition of plays, one will find composure along the optimal path. And in that model, we will find ourselves in utopia. I like to believe that. So yes. So anyway, there are many more modes. Like we can regulate the mind and modify the mind and multiply and so on. There's many, many modes built in. I'll talk about them another time if you'll give me your ear. But anyway, right now, like I said, I've just painted a picture of a few systemic modes and they give systemic agency to the mind. And if you kind, if you try and become mindful of them right now as a, a set onto themselves, like it's like the leg bone connected to the knee bone, the knee bone connected to the thigh bone. Well, this is kind of like evaluation connected to navigation, navigation connected to unification, unification connected to identification. They're all of one set, one topological set, one topological order that moves fluently and systemically through to the world so it can find its place within and so on. So yes, so think of this as one constellation set. So now every single instrument, okay, let's look at the individual now or the individual, whatever you want to call it. We're all part of a collective hive, we're all part of a collective head, we're all part of this collective orchestra. We're all part of it and we all have an instrument, a sensitive instrument within. And this instrument is extremely complex. When you break it down like this, when you've abstract it the way I have done when you get into the gut of phenomenology and strip it back like this. We all have these mechanisms, okay? Oh, everybody can add, okay? Everybody can add up their money. Everybody can evaluate their way to the airport and we can, you know, scientists are evaluating molecules, okay? They're taking the evaluation a step forward, but it's the same tool. It's like I picked up an apple or I picked up a, a car, okay? It doesn't, it's more complex the things we're picking up sometimes, but it's still the same mode in play. So we're all loaded with these modes. This top topological set, it has, geometry in all people. So this is a measurement of us. When you disengage, the idea we can engage to is another utility mode of the mind. We can engage with science, we can engage with molecules, we can engage with love, we can engage with war, we can engage with corruption, and we can disengage from. So there's a whole set, like I said. But they allow us to give systemic agency to the mind and they tell us that the mind is at a subconscious level behind all our language, surface language sets, okay? This mind, this mind is driving my words right now. Okay, it's implied right now if you're listening to me. Behind all of these words, this mind is systemically trying to find a core with the scale of things. And this is huge enough. So this is the instrument we're addressing. Okay, and if we don't and if we don't address it in this light, we don't fully understand its magnitude, its weight. It is it is majestic in us. And this is the bedrock for utopia. Bringing this lens into light understanding it, refining it, building on it, moving forward on the back of it, because this is a transcendental lens. This lens has nothing to do with the old ego and the old paradigm. This is above, this is, has transcended the monkey brain within us. And this is the brain, this is the mindset we need to move forward on. I truly believe that. So that's what I'm trying to bring to the table of eudaimonia, of utopia with an E. I want to impress on you, you're trying to impress on me, like I said, we're all trying to impress on one another and we, we either impress on, on each other in positive ways or in negative ways. So let's impress on each other, let's understand how delicate we all are and, how, and, and be sensitive to one another and start to realise like, wow, we are losing the potential of that lens in every single musician. We are not playing right at the orchestra of life. Like we have oligarchs robbing all the instruments, trying to sell them back to us. We have politicians who won't tell us what the left wing is saying to the right wing of the orchestra. We have advertisers who are dumbing down all our children and telling us you have the wrong instrument, okay? It's not the right size, the right color, the right shape, okay? We're muddying the waters. And it's all by degree, it's all by degree. But there are a lot of negative impressions and they muddy the waters by degree and there's a lot of positive impressions and they lift us by degree and so on and so on, okay? And we have to address that. We have to root out all the corruption in our species. We have to root it out and we have to find the optimum path. That's my point. We have to find the optimum path and we have to understand the majestic lens that's sitting inside everyone because that makes us all the same at the hive. Okay, that's the overall point. You are not better than anybody else. I am no better than anybody else because this is the transcendental lens within all of us and this is our measure. This is our measure in the ultimate sense. So yes, anyway, I hope you can find something in what I've said. And um, yeah, thank you for listening. Peace and love and logic. Mm -hmm.